Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a Q&A and this Q&A is going to be mainly, actually only fitness related. So I posted on my Instagram story, one of those ask your question type of things. And um, so I mainly just want this Q&A to be about my fitness journey. If you guys have any questions about it, I wanted to get into kind of a little more detail about my personal journey as far as like food and training and stuff like that. So I posted the questions thing. I got a bunch of questions and then I posted a story again today just saying if you guys had any more questions to let me know. So I took a bunch of screenshots and I haven't really decided which ones I'm going to touch on. I haven't really prepared at all. So um, we're just going to jump right in. If you guys are interested in my fitness Q&A, then just keep watching. Okay, so first question is, will you ever get into powerlifting? Um, <clears throat> I admire the hell out of people who do powerlifting and I always aspire to get stronger and when I see powerlifters on Instagram, I'm like shocked, especially women, like really, really strong women. It's insane to me how much some of these women out here can lift and I respect it so much, but personally for me, I don't think that I'll really ever get into it. I obviously want to get stronger in my training and that's something that I consistently work on but for me I don't ever think powerlifting is really in the cards um just a personal choice I really am not as strong as I would like to be so I don't even think that I would do very well um so no I don't think I'll ever do powerlifting but again I respect the hell out of it I follow a lot of powerlifters and I think it's really really cool so nothing against it whatsoever I just don't think it's for me Okay, next question. Why did you choose to compete in a figure? So this is something that I think I touched on before in an older video. It might have been the first Q&A that I ever posted. So when I decided that I was going to compete, there were a few people in my gym that recommended bikini competitions. And that's what I kind of knew it as, just bikini competitions. I didn't even know there was a figure division at first. So <laughs> once I started researching more, I found like Nicole Wilkins and Swan and a bunch of other beautiful figure competitors and I didn't have that amount of muscle yet but that's what I was striving to get to once I started following these women um, because I just thought that they were stunning and they were muscular they looked athletic and that was the look that I wanted <laughs> so I chose to compete in a figure based off a look that I wanted to achieve when really I should have probably competed in bikini my first show because I was really small. I'll try and find a picture and insert it here for my first competition. Um, but I definitely wasn't ready to compete in figure at first. But again, I was competing in the division that I was aspiring to be. So that was kind of my reasoning. Like I want to, I want to do figure. I want to look like the figure women. So I'm just going to do figure whether I'm ready or not basically was my mentality. And I'm super happy that I chose that division. I think it's the, the right division for me. Um, I get asked a lot if I'll ever move up to women's physique. And if you meet me in person, I think that it's pretty clear that I'm not a women's physique competitor. Um, I know I can look pretty big and when I have a pump and stuff like that, but if you see women's physique like Shanique Grant, she is just out of this world. She doesn't even look real, <laughs> but she is a whole other level of muscularity. I feel like for me, figure division is perfect, but I love the way Shanique looks. I love women's physique. I think it's amazing. Um, but just for me, I feel like figure is the right spot for me. <laughs> so kind of snowballing off of that question, um, when will you be on stage again is the next question. So I have not competed in 2018 and I honestly probably won't. Um, so my last show was June of 2017. And I won the overall and it was one of the best days of my life. I loved my look so much. Honey trained me through that prep and it was honestly like the best prep I ever had. Like yes, I made a ton of sacrifices. I I was grinding super hard, but I was so just tunnel vision. I wanted to win the overall. I wanted to look better than I've ever looked and I didn't also I didn't want to let Hani down because this was his first time coaching me so I felt like I had something to prove and kind of like I need to make this worth his while <laughs> so that was a little extra motivation it's like Hani Rambald's coaching me so I need to I need to win basically <laughs> but I don't think I'll compete in 2018 I just for me personally I've been traveling more this year than I ever have and I know a lot of people prep 
and travel, but that's just something that I don't think would work well for me personally, and I applaud people that do it because traveling and eating right is so hard. Like, you have to really, really, really prepare. And I traveled overseas a few times this year, and I was just back and forth between LA and Philly, and I've just been all over the place. And so for me personally, I just didn't feel that it was the right time. Any, any time this year, I didn't feel was right for me to start a prep. That being said, I right now I am cutting a little bit because I have some shoots coming up and some stuff like some projects that I'm doing with Evagen and Hani so I am doing a little bit of a cut right now and then Hani and I are actually talking very soon about when we will start an official prep but it will probably be beginning of 2019 ish so if you guys are interested in a prep series on my youtube channel definitely let me know in the comments because that's something that i would love to do and i find prep series so interesting um so i know a lot of you guys follow me because of like the competing and stuff like that so i definitely want to get back to it and i am honestly itching to get back on stage so badly so let me know i'm <laughs> sorry i'm like out of breath when i talk about competing i get so excited but let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in and that's the plan right now so um hopefully early 2019 i will have a show set actually probably soon i'll have a show set and then i will start my prep early 2019. next question if you could only do two or three ab exercises what would they be so let's see i would do definitely do hanging leg raises hanging leg raises decline sit-ups like on a decline bench um with some sort of weight or like kettlebell or plate or something um and probably ab wheel so hanging leg raise decline sit-ups and ab wheel that's my final answer <laughs> okay this is an interesting question did you set out to be a fitness persona or did it just sort of happen and how so so um I absolutely did not set out to be a fitness persona whatsoever. Um, I actually, I think this was a, another question too, so I'll hit this right here, what I studied in college. Um, I actually studied English. I had a minor in communications, and I also had a minor in, or my concentration for English was literature. So I love to read, I love to write, and my goal when I graduated from college was to get into publishing for like magazines or newspapers or something like that. I just love print. I love books. I love physical books, <laughs> like flipping the page. I've never owned a Kindle or anything like that. So I just love reading and writing. Um, so that was kind of my goal. So, but also in college I ran track. So I was always athletic. I played basketball, ran track all through high school. And then I got a scholarship to run track at Ryder University. So I ran track for four years. And then when I graduated from college, I kind of just didn't know where I wanted to go fitness wise. So I joined a gym obviously and I started working out and Lauren LF used to be just like my personal account. Um, and then I slowly started just posting more fitness stuff just like here and there just to see like if, you know, just, I don't know. I just was feeling it out and working out and being healthy is something that I've always been passionate about so I was like why not post about it I wasn't really following many fitness people at the time like I said there were one or f one or two women that I liked um so I just started posting little fitnessy things here and there I'll still post like personal like other personal like stuff like me and my friends and stuff like that and slowly but surely I was, I guess, getting out there more just from posting fitness pictures and hashtagging and stuff like that. And a lot of the like female motivation pages like started reposting me here and there. And so that's how my page initially started growing from there. And then obviously once it started growing, I started posting more and more fitness content. Um, and I was just getting more and more passionate about it. So it was fun for me. and. I, I just love doing it. So that's kind of how it got started. I didn't set out to do this at all. Um, and I don't think anybody really does. I think everybody always kind of has a plan, whether it be go to college and then get a job or whatever, or, or not, or start my own business or, you know, whatever it may be. I don't think anybody like sets out to be a fitness person. It just kind of happens. At least that's what I think. But I mean, I'm here now and <laughs> I'm so, so, so happy that 
life has led me here. Next question. Let's see. There's a lot of good ones. And I don't want this video to be like three hours long. So I will try to pick um, the ones that I see popping up the most. Let's see. What have been the key factors to help you keep a lean physique year-round? Hashtag goals. I love you, Shirley. <laughs> So this question is something that I get quite a bit, especially with competing and stuff like that. I know a lot of women and men struggle post-show um, because once you hit a certain level of leanness, you are almost never satisfied or a lot of people are, are not satisfied with their year-round physique or the physique that they slowly transition into post-show. And I get it. I mean, I'm the same way. So for me, it's a couple of things. Um, when I competed in my last show, I made a point to stay consistent with eating clean most of the time. Obviously, I was allowing myself some treats here and there. Um, and the biggest thing for me is I just enjoy doing cardio. I say this all the time, and I know people think that I'm crazy for it, but I enjoy doing cardio, and I enjoy sweating and getting my heart rate up whether that be hit workouts or just stairmaster or running or jump roping anything i love it so that for me has been super helpful in terms of staying lean all year round um but i mean every single person's body is different and i will say genetics definitely plays a part for me both of my parents are fairly lean people my mom is like a tiny little thing so genetics definitely play a part I'm not gonna sit here and say that they don't but it's also I work very hard to maintain a certain physique year round because I do photo shoots and appearances and stuff like that so I want just for me I want to look good and feel good all the time so if I get to a certain point where my body where I'm uncomfortable with my body then I don't feel good I don't perform well and for me, this is a physique that is sustainable. So I'm not eating super low calories. I'm not doing hours of cardio. It's a very sustainable, healthy lifestyle physique for me. But I mean, just eating right and doing cardio. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing cardio every single day. I would say probably five days a week. I do fasted 30 minutes max usually, um, or I'll go for a run, but it's just, Finding things that you enjoy that keep you active and healthy, really. Okay, so this is something that I find very interesting because this is something that I used to deal with a lot when I first started putting myself out there on Instagram. So this girl asked if I ever felt less desirable to men for being muscular. And she said, you shouldn't, but I do sometimes. So first of all, when I first started posting my workouts and stuff like that and I was I was gaining muscle mass and I you know I would post my like flexing pictures and stuff like that when I first started doing all that so obviously my following was much smaller but I would still get these comments like you look like a dude that's disgusting here she looks gross that's a man not a chick blah 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 um, and I used to get so upset I used to cry I wanted to delete Instagram. I didn't want to do fitness anymore. And it was really hard because I felt like I was working so hard and I was so proud of myself. And then it's just like you see something like that and it almost negates everything that you're doing and you just feel so bad about yourself. And that was, that was really hard for me at first. But um, you just have to realize like you're not doing this for other people. And I mean, obviously, when I post on Instagram, like physique pictures and stuff like that, I want to be a motivating, inspiring person to those who follow me, whether it be women or men. But at the end of the day, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this because I love it. I love the way I look. I love being healthy. I love being strong. And that's enough for me. So it took me a while to get to this point but i'm so comfortable with my body i love my body and i'm a lot more than just my body most importantly so if you don't like it you don't have to look at it you don't have to follow me you could block me and i'll and you'll never see me again like it's really easy <laughs> but it did take me a long time to get to that point but i'm just at a point where i'm doing i'm doing this for me i love it and I'm the one that has to be with me all the time, so <laughs> um, 
you just have to you just have to think of it that way like you're not doing this for strangers on the internet you're not doing this for the approval of others you're doing it because you love it and that that's all that matters this is not a fitness question but somebody asked how old Riggs is so I figured I'd just let you know he is two he will be three in April and his birthday is exactly one week after mine <laughs> okay next question is do you have slash believe in rest days absolutely i believe in rest days i think they are so important i think if you want to grow or you know if you want to achieve the physique that that you're aspiring to have you need to let your muscles rest you need to let your body rest when i'm not competing i'll do one to two rest days per week uh when i am prepping for a show it's usually one but it depends it all depends on how i'm feeling so you have to listen to your body. You will likely know if you need a rest day. If everything hurts, and I know you guys have had those days where it's just like, your legs are still sore from three days ago, your back is sore from yesterday, your shoulders are sore, everything is sore and everything hurts. You need to allow your body to rest and you need to feed it and you need to consume lots of water. Lots of people are on that no days off, grind, 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 bullshit but you need rest. Your body needs rest. Your body needs sleep. Your body needs to recover. And that is just as important, if not more important than the training itself. I can't stress it enough. Okay, do you track macros? Um, this might shock a lot of people, but I don't track macros when I'm not on prep or not getting ready for something. I Macros, okay, let me explain. So I do track, let me start there, because I have certain protein goals that I want to hit, um, but I have become really good at intuitive eating and knowing what my body likes. More importantly, knowing what my body does not like and what does not agree with my body. So it's a lot of trial and error to get to a point where you can confidently, intuitively eat. That's what I do when I'm not prepping for a show or when I'm not, you know, getting ready for like a like a photo shoot that I need to really cut for or anything like that. So the, I do have a protein goal that I try to hit and I don't always hit it. But um, like I said, intuitive eating has been what has worked best for me personally. I have nothing against uh, like diligently tracking macros. I think it's great. Intuitive eating has just been the best for me. It it's the least stressful and I have enough stress in my life and enough stuff going on that I don't want macros to stress me out. So again, I have done a lot of research within my own self and my own body and there are things that I stay away from like soy. Soy and me do not get along, honey. We do not get along. Ooh, but <laughs> and I just try to get in I try to get in whole nutritious fats and carbs and I just try to eat in a way that makes my body feel good and eat things that are good for my body and that are good for my digestion and things that make me feel good. So that's my goal when I'm eating is what's going to make me feel good, what am I going to stay away from? So that's pretty much it. I am not a strict tracker whatsoever. I just think that uh, for me it puts too much stress and pressure on something that I love so I just choose to stay away from doing that and again I just eat to feel good all right guys so I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it I hope that you got a little bit of a better insight on me and how I go about things and hopefully some of the stuff that I said was helpful for you please subscribe to my channel I appreciate you guys so much for being here and anybody that watches my videos I love you guys so much if you have any suggestions for future videos definitely always put them down below as well I love hearing your guys um, recommendations for videos that you want to see and that's gonna wrap this video up and I'll see you guys in the next one bye